you're gonna get it hopefully what about you drea <laughs> um, what's your what's your final or uh, overall thoughts on rods my overall thoughts on rods are i think that they're real that they're showing up on camera some of them are moths but i think some of the other ones i don't know they can be shape-shifting interdimensional things you know maybe like oh i'm gonna take the shape of a moth right now they seem harmless I don't really see the, the big deal about, like, why no. people are spending their lives, like, figuring this out. Um, focus on something else. <laughs> why not? Somebody has to be the champion of something. Every Bigfoot's got a guy. Dogman's got a guy. Lizardman's got guys. Everyone's got guys. All these cryptids need guys. And well, Jose what's our is... guy? Who's... Oh, what do you mean? We're not a cryptid. People oh. know where we are. Okay. That, yeah, and good. technically, there's more there's more pictures of rods than there is of say like lizard yeah. man. Oh, I get unsolicited or... pictures of rods. Like it's not it's a pro- awesome. it's a problem. It's it They're has everywhere. become a problem since we've started the show. You guys need to reel it back a little bit, but um, keep them coming. And also check out a video <laughs> called uh, Walt Flanagan's Rods. It's just a visual thing. Just go look at um, a rod captured by a man named Walt Flanagan. It's of a hockey game. <laughs> where a rod flies by during a hockey game. It's a real rod. I, I guarantee it. And uh, make sure and go answer this week's rod. Um, I mean, poll at... <laughs> let's get rods out of here. The Answer the poll at unbeliever'spodcast.com. Who is the real champion of the rod? Is it Jose? Is it Doctor Who? Is it the birder lady? Or is it me? <laughs> and oh. now it's time to get out of here. Thank God. Rods. We've got all those rods out of us now. Yeah. Strange cryptid. Uh, I don't know how I I feel about it. Uh, I do think it's interesting uh, that something could either be, like Jeff the Mongoose, he could either be cryptid or poltergeist or or this or or animal. animal. Yeah. 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 Possession, all kind of stuff. And this is the same thing. It could be a bug. It could be a bird. It could be a UFO. It could be, we don't know. It could be anything. But according to Jose, it's got to be something. If you're going to put all that into it, it's got to be something, man. I don't think this guy has lived his life as a complete sham. No way. No, no. I Look, he's doing his own. He's Like I said, he's fixated on these rods so much. And that's fine. You know, as long as he gets it <laughs> out of his problem. system. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like I meant to say earlier, it's it's not that big of a deal. It's they're They're not causing any trouble. Like, relax. Go Go find another hobby. I don't know. All right, I hope well, for look. his sake. I hope for his sake that they are real. That that we're all made to look like fools, and that someday they're like, yeah, there's there's fucking six foot rods flying around with wings up there, and like it's gonna we, be now we, we know for gonna, sure. Then that would be. I I really hope that happens for him. Otherwise, be, they he's live. wasted so much time. We can get. They live one day, man. Someone's got to make some like rod tech uh, glasses. <laughs> we can see these things flying around, trying to fly in our face. Yeah, we don't want mouth. them there. You got to wear the. Space I don't want to go in a cave, and I don't want a rod coming at me. Well, like just that. stay away from the bushes too. Does. Stay away from no, caves. I'm and not. Bushes. I'm never shaking a bush. No. I'm not throwing balls around. I don't want the rods, but. Let's let's pick it up. Let's get someone who isn't fixated on rods, and let's uh, talk about uh, someone near and dear to us. And let's go to Unbeliever News. Welcome to Unbeliever News. This is a segment where we spotlight someone in the unbelievable community doing something. And this one, I don't know if you guys seen this yet. This is literal Unbeliever News. This is our uh, official composer, Unbeliever A.A. Ron, being featured on the news in Nashville. Have you seen it yet? Yeah, I did. It was freaking awesome. How cool. I saw the clip. I saw the it, clip. Very awesome. I'm so happy. It's very for cool. Go check it out. Give them some likes and comments, man. Let them know that it was really cool to have A.A. Ron on. But we're going to play the clip, man. This is... This is this is weird. Unbeliever news is literally unbelievers on the news. 
You guys got to get out there, man. You start doing some shit. Well, I guess we should too, but <laughs> we're calling ourselves You guys are doing well. great. You're doing great. You're doing fine. Everyone's doing great. Don't do anything because most of the times you end up on the news because of something that we probably won't play on the show. Yeah, stay so, off the news. <laughs> Except for you, Aaron. <laughs> Except for you. You're doing great. Except Everybody's for you. doing great. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron took it. He's on the news. That's it. So let's hear Aaron, our buddy Aaron Schilb on the news. Welcome back, everybody. We have singer-songwriter Aaron Schilb on our stage right now. We can't wait to hear him perform. But before we do, we're going to learn more about his story because it's pretty incredible. Our producer, Amber Ongaro, has more on how this mostly deaf musician learned to hear music again. My name is Aaron Schilb. I grew up in Columbia, Missouri, in a college town, and a family of musicians. Music came easily for Aaron Schilb, but there were some pretty big challenges along the way. The self-taught guitar player started a band in high school, pursued music in college, and like many, moved to Nashville. I have never once considered doing anything else other than music. I'm not good at anything else. <laughs> I think you're really good at it. That's where I turned and I ran. Shield fills each and every note, every vibration. He just can't hear it. I'm gonna make my own way. When I was 10 years old, I failed a hearing test at school for the first time. Doctors eventually diagnosed Shield with autosclerosis, a rare condition resulting in hearing loss. I had an operation on my ears when I was 16, and they thought that it would correct it, and it did not. And when I was 16, it actually made my hearing worse. So I kind of just came to the solution of, okay, this is my life now, what do I do? And the doctors very bluntly told me, you can't play music anymore, music will make it worse. You need to learn sign language. I heard my mama calling, but I went the other way. He ignored the doctors and just kept doing what he loved. But I'm still running from redemption. I'll let it catch me someday. Now he's a singer-songwriter, runs a publishing company, composes my theme music for podcasts, and performs heaven. on the regular. Hey, Ooh, without reference. my hearing aids, I can probably hear about 10% of things. So, going into Nashville, loud rock and roll music venues, I can take them out and just kind of feel the thump of the bass in my chest, and that's about it. I play mostly Damn. by sight and feel. I play more by sight and feel than I do by sound. But I just had to stay. And with live shows, anything can happen. And I'm still running from redemption. And i let it catch me someday. Yeah, I was performing over off of West End Avenue. Both ears went out at the same time about this song of me being deaf. It was hilarious, though, because I just took them out and finished the song. Everyone has struggles. It's how we deal with the hand we are dealt. Disabilities don't stop people from doing things they love to do. We just have to try a different approach to succeed in what we want to accomplish. Very awesome. Freaking incredible. Love a a Ron. Yeah. Man, Aaron's like a freaking superhero, man. Like, I don't know how the hell he does it. Yeah, it's like oh. Daredevil, but with badass music. His story is so awesome, man. That that is that is really really freaking cool. It always has been. It's inspiring and all that, but yada yada. Aaron's cool. Aaron's you're our buddy. Always we we always appreciate uh, you helping us out and you helping the unbelievable podcast and doing those great songs for other shows, man. The great oh yeah, Zang- the sports the lords one is Zang- so this. good. Sports lords is every week. I can't wait to hear it. Uh, Ghost hunting in New England's got an awesome theme for him too. We're all there, and we're we're all kind of like that little unbelievable uh, little family of podcasts. That's us. Uh, and Aaron, Aaron's kind of that connective tissue to us all. Uh, writing these great songs, these great little clips. You heard him. He played the uh, theme that you're going to hear going out because that was Unbeliever News. <laughs> Very cool on Believer News. C- congratulations, Aaron, again. Seriously. Um, I, I've got one more other thing, though. Uh, it's not exactly on Believer News. And, man, thinking about doing this episode, I, I, it's kind of hit me. I, I don't think I'll ever be the champion of the rods, uh, at least not anytime soon. Not with that attitude. But, 
well, but maybe we can be the champion of the unbelievers, uh, the three of us. So there's an unbeliever who uh, reached out and needs a little help right now. Uh, this is Unbeliever Morgan. Morgan goes wreck. Uh, she says, hey, guys, I know I haven't been very active here lately, but I thought I'd post this here. I need help with tuition and books because my school took away my financial aid and I have no way of getting any other aid. I can't even afford the book I need and I have a test due. Through the book in three days. If you can help, I will be forever great, forever grateful. Uh, that's Unbeliever Morgan. Uh, this is this sucks for you. And, you know, like I said, we can't champion the rods quite yet, but we can champion the Unbelievers. Do you think you could put a link to uh, to this in the description, Rob? Rob or Rod? What's your name again? Uh, I think it's Rod. <laughs> you can call me Rod now, actually. Um, okay, Rod. Yeah, I got you, man. Uh, let's put we'll put the link in there. Let's help. Let's help her out. Come on. What? What the fuck, school? Come on. Yeah, dude. It's, yeah, it's getting is... so hard to freaking better yourself through education when they act like they don't even want you to get an education. So yeah, I feel that pain. Let's help her out. It sucks. It sucks. It's Morgan Neal, Unbeliever Morgan. Morgan goes wreck. Y'all remember remember her from uh, from Unbelievable Podcast. She was real active, big supporter of the show. Did a lot of cool stuff. And yeah, I read I read even the further description, and uh, she, they're saying she's taking too many credits, so that's why they're not like giving her. The, it's wow. It sucks, so, and oh, she you needs did money too for good books. in school. Great. Like here's a punishment. Right. Fuck. So. Do what you can for poor Unbeliever Morgan. Is it going to be, you know, she needs this in a couple of days, too. So that's why we're just popping this up now. Yeah. Oh, wasn't she uh, in an Unbelievable Podcast? She was I'm Not Dorothy, right? Yes, that's absolutely oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so if you don't remember, remember that's who she is. Now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, go help her out. But now, Drea, just sit tight because it's time for poll such an asshole. Results! <laughs> This week's poll, who is the most believable witness from Witnessed? With all our favorite people. Now, who are the choices this week were? Oh, Richard and Dan, Cousin Connie, the UN Ambassador, John Gotti, and others. So I'm going to ask you, Rob Oki, who just came off of a big old interview with a paranormal show. Cool guy. Um, who do you think the Unbelievers chose? Shout outs to R.U. Weaves live. That was that was fun. Thank you for having me on. But um, who are the choices again? What did you just say? Uh, we have Richard and Dan, Cousin Connie, the U.N. Ambassador, and John Gotti. Uh, I guess Richard and Dan, right? Those are the those are the guys who reenacted the abduction and and threw her in sure. the river, right? Yeah, these are the guys who who stuck her face in the river, but they're Long Island guys, so Rob's pulling for the home team. Hey. Uh, what about you, Drea? Who you have? That's exactly who I was going to say, because they're the only ones who did something, but, oh, Cousin Connie. Cousin Connie. <laughs> the, the, the not exactly real Cousin Connie. Well, you're both wrong. With 12.5% <laughs> of the vote, John Gotti is the most believable witness. Damn it. Who would... Uh, who would ever cross the goddies? Uh, but, of course, there are others. Uh, who is the most believable witness? Uh, he wasn't looking at you. He was looking at your blood log. <gasps> signed. <laughs> signed. My name is Max. Whoa, change up. Fuck. It's blood log. Blood bag. Let's hear it. Finally. I need to watch that movie again because I didn't catch that at first. That's very clever. You're the lead. My name is Max. Uh, who is the most believable witness? Your mom. But you didn't sign oh. off. Oh. Because they're scared of your mom, obviously. I'll, I'll assume it was Muscle Man. Who is the most believable witness? That story had more twist than Jay Z Knight had shots of tequila on a weekday. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Signed to Cosanton. Awesome one. Love it. ETs. ETs. Extraterrestrial. Indeed. 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, who is the most believable witness? Crazy and cra All right, I gotta get ready. Here we go again. <laughs> Crazy cousin Connie creepily crawled from her cramped crevasse while. Kular caught a glimpse of Cortile's climb. Signed, 
Alliterative unbeliever. Oh, Damn. please don't make me read it again. <laughs> impressive. Which I'll have to. I love him. Most impressive. Or her. Who is the most believable witness? Carol motherfucking Rainey. She exposed his gross manipulation and manufacturing of facts and being an abusive, predatory.